Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to explore a bit of a puzzle. Uh, somebody uh, made a comment on a couple of videos back regarding uh, measurement of, of RF voltage used in an oscilloscope and obviously it's quite difficult to, to make measurements at high frequencies or it's certainly harder uh, and I was relying on the, the results of the scope so what I've decided to do is I've decided to make something which will allow me to convert those RF voltages to a DC voltage and then make some comparisons so the scope that I'm going to use is the Antec DSO5102B behind me and I'm going to use a couple of my signal generators the Philelec FE FY6900 and the Tiny SA um, Spectrum Analyzer, as that's capable of outputting signals up to 350 megahertz, although the scope's bandwidth is, is 100 megahertz. So those are the two scopes that have, um, are easy to produce a, a reasonably accurate uh, signal. So let's have a look at what I did and let's have a look at the results and see, um, see what we think of the puzzle. Okay, so I've been using various signal generators to make measurements on uh, one or two oscilloscopes that I've been reviewing and it's generally accepted the bandwidth of an oscilloscope um, is the point at which uh, the measurements drop below the 3 dB uh, point from the initial measurement and the signal generator I've been using previously is the Felilec FY6900 that's uh, 0 to 50 MHz uh, but um, in the last couple of months I've obtained um, a tiny SA which although it's a spectrum analyzer also has the ability to output signals in fact on the low port it can output signals up to 350 megahertz so I've been been using both of those so let's um, let's have a look at uh, some of the results I've been getting here's the um, FY6900 and here are the measurements uh, taken of RMS voltage taken on the Hantec DSO 5102P and if I now put in a line which describes the 3 dB down point as you can see the scope uh, performance slowly tails off and just below well just above 30 megahertz it uh, crosses the 3 dB line and you can probably argue that up to 45 megahertz it's still pretty much on the 3 dB line but beyond that it starts to tail off Similarly, if we look at the tiny SA, um, and I have taken these measurements a couple of times, so uh, the rather oddly shaped line is correct. If we now put the 3 dB down point on that, as you can see, up to 50 megahertz, it's sort of similar to the um, Felilec in that it dips below and then comes back up and then starts to tail off. But as you can see, that's suggesting the scope's performance is, is well below the 3 dB down point. And I've been puzzling about that one and somebody asked a question the other week about taking measurements with a multimeter. Now obviously multimeters are not going to be able to um, take AC voltage measurements certainly up to those kind of numbers in the case of this graph it's 100 megahertz on the right hand side so what I decided to do was um, to make something that would measure RF voltage and that's a, a classic RF probe here's a circuit for the one that I've built um, thanks to radio communication handbook and also N5 ESE who've both got some very good information on that so I built this little circuit on a little bit of strip board kept the connections as short as possible as I was going to be dealing with RF and then what I did was uh, attach the signal generator to the input with a 50 ohm load so that the signal generator wasn't unterminated and then I took my RMS voltage measurements using the scope um, from the point by the input and then I took the DC voltage measurements uh, on the right hand side there so let's now have a look at th those results and this is quite interesting the blue line is the RMS voltage as you saw previously the brown line is the DC voltage so actually what we're saying there is that the output of the signal generator is not a straight line and if you take 3 dB off the DC voltage and put that in which is the red dotted line as you can see the RMS um, measurements from the scope 
uh, don't drop below the 3 dB point right up as far as 50 megahertz so which one's right well obviously my homebrew um, RF probe is well it's homemade uh, the RSGB's uh, radio communication handbook suggests that kind of circuit is good up to about 150 megahertz so hopefully the results are are reasonable they're certainly repeatable I've done them two or three times and the tiny SA um, again as you can see the DC voltage the blue line um, does uh, sort of track the R the RMS voltage obtained from the scope um, there's an interesting uh, swap over between uh, 60 and 80 megahertz but um, I'm not going to puzzle about that one right now but the important point to note is the red dotted line which is 3 dB below the um, RMS figure as you can see for the most part apart from a little discrepancy between 65 and 70 the um, the scope actually is giving you uh, a measurement that is less than than 3 dB down from the uh, actual voltage assuming my DC measurements are giving me an accurate voltage so where does that leave us well good question uh, but we're in good company because if you look at my two other signal generators this is the Taylor model 65b from 1943 it's a valve instrument which I restored and you can see the green trace there it, it drops away quite quickly um, and then levels off beyond 10 megahertz it doesn't go above 20 megahertz really and the rapid electronics 85-1200 which is a quite common uh, you see it in several guises uh, which is a solid state 1970s signal generator again drops off quite steeply until about 15 megahertz and then it's a reasonably um, straightest line after that so having um, signal generators without a linear output is nothing new um, and uh, you know people who made uh, equipment in the 1940s only had the Taylor Model B and it was considered probably quite a decent bit of kit at the time certainly it was um, the equivalent of what would be several hundred pounds today so um, interesting and which is right well I don't know and I haven't got any really expensive kit that I can do those measurements with but it does make you wonder uh, exactly what um, what you're saying when you when you're talking about measurements uh, of bandwidth on on oscilloscopes okay well that's interesting information um, it's certainly got me uh, me thinking my little uh, RF probe if you want to call it that um, has allowed me to certainly make some repeatable measurements how accurate they are um, I don't know and I don't have the kind of expensive equipment that would allow me to verify that but uh, maybe some of you out there have got some better kit and you can perhaps uh, try some of these experiments yourselves and, and see how you get on one thing is for sure though I'm going to be very careful when I'm taking bandwidth measurements on oscilloscopes in the future um, about just taking at face value the output of the signal generator being a straight line I have on a couple of my videos mentioned that I wasn't certain about that uh, but this has allowed me to, to prove to myself that it definitely isn't the case that uh, even modern digital kit uh, doesn't uh, necessarily produce a, a straight line output in terms of voltage despite what the display on the front might be saying so I hope that's been useful if you've got some of this kit maybe you can try some of these experiments yourself that's certainly cost um, very little to produce my little um, RF measuring device and I'm going to hang on to that now because it might come in useful for future projects so thanks very much for watching um, hope it's got you thinking certainly got me thinking um, if you've liked the video please click the thumbs up if not you can click the thumbs down either way it'd be fantastic if you could subscribe thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one